Well, good morning, Brighton Methodist Church. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, we're getting good at this now. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we only have a couple of announcements for today, and then we're going to go into our ministry minute. So before then, our biggest thing coming up always is August 27th, our huge picnic before we're kicking off Heritage Week, 1 and 2 in September. We also have BSF coming up for women. That's starting September 12th. If you have any more questions, Please talk to the wonderful Miss Levita standing in the very back at the moment right now. She's waving her hand and everything. 
Uh, outside of that, in the lobby, we are still praying for those children going out, going to a brand new school, and we'd love to see your prayers over them as they start in their new venture, as well as new children coming in to first start. And with that, I want to say, oh, there's more. I'm not done yet. I got excited for no reason. <laughs> we have Faith Day at the Rockies with Deb. Uh, this year's performance is from Hillsong United, and that's going to be August 20th. So if you have any more questions, please reach out to her. And with that, we are going into the Ministry Minute. But alas, when I turn, there is no one here for the Ministry Minute. So <laughs> we are taking this opportunity to truly explain. If you have a mission, something that you've been involved in, whether that's inside of the church, whether that no one has ever walked in the church doors, but you would love for this community to get involved, this is what our ministry minute is for. It is a calling on people's hearts to come up. You will talk from one, hopefully not past 10 minutes, about the ministry that you are involved in, <laughs> whether that be SBR, trustees, angels, hosts, Oh my gosh, I'm mincing my words today. Uh, any type of ministry that you are involved in or you know in the greater Brighton Methodist community, please reach out to me or my administrative assistant, Lisa, and we'll sign you up because we'll be doing this for the rest of the year and I don't want to be able to turn and say, oh no, there's no one standing here for the next three minutes. <laughs> so with that, I want us to all take a moment to close our eyes. We are moving from a place where we are talking about announcements and things going on inside of the church community and a moment of prayer. And we say this, dear Lord, thank you for letting us worship you. Thank you for allowing us to be here today. We are so grateful for your presence. And we do not doubt you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now please stand with me as we sing, Holy, Holy, Lord God Almighty.
now I ask for our children to come up for our mystery box. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. Good morning. It's so nice to see you. So I don't know what's in this mystery box. I know, we're getting excited, because it is a mystery, isn't it? <laughs> so I need you all's help to be able to open it. Do you think you can do that for me? Okay. You want to help me open it? Okay, here we go. <gasps> what do we have in here? Can we lift it up? Oh, <laughs> look at this, sharing in the morning. <laughs> Can, you <laughs> can we hold it up for the rest of the crowd to see? <laughs> or, <laughs> or we can put it in our mouth, <laughs> which is good. Ah, oh, it's a bracelet. And on this bracelet, it says he lives. Do we know who the he we are talking about? God. God? Oh, do you hear that already? They already know. <laughs> There's, th there's thunder. That is because he lives, amen? <laughs> now, can you all tell me maybe a special time Jesus has done something for you that shows that he lives? Well, I know that even this morning while I was praying, I felt the Holy Spirit move me and as a reminder that he lives, as well as a large cup of coffee, which is increasing my faith as we speak. <laughs> I'll tell you what, whenever you feel afraid or worried about anything, the reminder is that because Jesus lives, that we are safe and protected and loved. Can you guys say a prayer with me? Okay, we're going to bow our hands, we're going to close our eyes real tight, okay? Ready? And we're going to say this. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Jesus. Amen. 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 Okay, thank you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. My name is Javita Russell. Today, I'll be reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans, chapter 6, verses 19 to 23. You can find this in page 119 in the Pew Bible. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you that then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and slave to God, the advantage to get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Amen, Javita. Thank you so much for that wonderful reading. So the title of my sermon today is Jesus Take the Wheel. 
We have learned over the past two weeks, though we have sinned and fallen short to the glory of God, we have also learned that we have a God who loves us while we are still sinners. And today, Brighton Methodist Church, we get to jump in together and have an understanding of the most important part of Romans' road to salvation. And that is Christ died for us. That he took something special, he took on our sins, the wages of our sins, and died for us so that we can be closer to him, to live in him. Amen? Now, since I assume we have all possibly been churchgoers for a while, maybe this is your first time, maybe you've been doing this since you were one years old or even younger, but I assume that this is a common statement inside of church walls, that it's the foundation of what we learn, even in Sunday school, that Christ died for us so that we are saved. However, something that I find that is not especially common is that even while we are sitting in the pews, singing worship songs, having an understanding of this, that we do not dive into the idea of being obedient to our God. My question for you all today as we dive into this sermon together is, have you made a choice not only to believe, not only to worship, praise, walk, read scriptures, but have you been able to be obedient to God, knowing that you have been saved? Have we all made that choice? Now, personally, on my own faith journey, when I first heard the word obedience, my skin began to crawl and I felt incredibly uncomfortable. It's this word that makes me feel the same way when we talked about God last week of a God who sees over us like a very invasive God who's not really there for loving and understanding, one that wants us to follow him. But at the time when I was younger or confused or didn't have a real understanding of my faith, it felt like God was trying to enslave me, trying to make me do whatever, like I was a pawn, a puppet, a robot. There wasn't a God who was there allowing me to choose, but just have me follow for the sake that he was God. But when I look back at Romans 6, 23, even earlier in the text, I realize that the slavery that I had thought I was going to receive from God was actually a slavery to sin. That our Lord and Savior was there not to put us in slavery, not to make us robots, not to follow without even thinking, but that I truly was already in a different place being a slave to other things. I remember a time in my life when that slavery came to full form and it happened none other on my 16th birthday. Now, I and another girl had the exact same date of our birthday, so we always fought every single year who was going to have the most people coming in to our birthday party. But we finally decided together for our 16th birthday, we are going to have a joint pool party. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be like the show Super Sweet 16, if anyone saw that back in the day. <laughs> and in that, we were having a time of growing together and having fun together, and it all came to a head over a chocolate bar. I guess a chocolate bar. <laughs> now, I don't know about you all, but if you ever had a wedding or a birthday party or anniversary or event or something special in your life where all the planning seems to come to a head and maybe we haven't acted the best to one another, maybe, Maybe it's just me. But the stress over balloons and flowers and other things all came to a full stop. And I can promise you I spent seven hours fighting with someone else over a chocolate bar. Now, this was a special Hershey's chocolate bar. You got your face printed on the Hershey's chocolate bar and got to pass it out to others. 
But the thing was, is who was going to get the back of the chocolate bar? Was it going to be more about her or me? We fought about this for hours and end, brought our families involved in this. We kept on trying to get involved over something so tiny, so minuscule. Everything had been going great. Was there ever a time for you where maybe it was the wedding day flowers, a caterer, maybe it was an anniversary, maybe it was something special that was so minuscule and small that you might have become obsessed with the same way six-year-old Maya became obsessed with having a little note about myself over someone else. Have you all ever become obsessed with something that in the grand scheme five years ago seemed like a large deal? but now seems like nothing. Have you ever become so obsessed with something, such a slave to something in a moment, that you lose sight of who you are? As I was diving in on what scripture to add in this week, I remembered that of Cain and Abel. And the first moment I thought, I can't add Cain and Abel. This is a very serious topic. We're talking about something heavy. But then when I looked back, I read this from Genesis 4, 3, 6. If you have your Bible, please read along with me. If not, I'll do my best to read with you. When we see this, we say, Now Abel kept flocks and Cain worked the soil. In the course of time, Cain brought some of the fruits of the soil as an offering to the Lord. And Abel also brought an offering, fat portions from some of firstborn of the flock. The Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. But on Cain and his offering, he did not look with favor. So Cain was very angry and his face was downcast. Then the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you do not do what is right, sin is crouching at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Now before Cain does something horrific to his brother, we see a Cain was focusing on the minute, the small food, food that he is growing, food that he has understanding. This is a Cain who has a relationship with God, is able to speak with God, and yet he focuses on the tiny, not giving of what he can to God. What is it that you all have been obsessed with this week? Something that you've been struggling to, fighting on, holding on to, and not willing to let go. How large or small has that been? Because Cain's story is the same as my story, even when I was a child, the same as all of our stories. Now, not the murder part, I hope, <laughs> inside of this moment, <laughs> or the heaviness of a moment, but what is that little tiny thing that you are holding on to this week? Romans 6.23 is the hardest for me in Romans' Road to Salvation because it is the reminder that our obsession, our smallness, can be broken. That we now get to have a choice, but it's an active choice, the same way God is telling Cain that, hey, there is Sin is waiting for you right at this front of this door. It's the same way that we are all experiencing every single day. It is us still always having to make an active choice, a choice to choose to follow God because he died for us, those wages of sin. And even though... We see a Jesus who says in Matthew 11, 28, 30, Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and, le and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. But I know at moments the burden doesn't feel light. I know 
that feeling of struggling over something so tiny that it makes your heart and blood want to boil, that you struggle with others inside of your lives, that you are trying to reach for something and that yoke is there, but sometimes I admit that yoke feels heavy. Sometimes I admit that I do feel like a king not wanting to give my full self to Jesus, not wanting to make that choice, focusing on the social media, focusing on my apps, focusing on any, every little thing, focusing on me being angry with my neighbor for leaving something on my lawn, something minute and small deters us from God. It is that standing on our front doorstep. It is that sin asking us to say, hey, come back, be a slave to me. Follow what I am saying to you. This is what Romans 6.23 is reminding of saying, no, you have that choice. We all get to make that decision right now here in this moment. Maybe you made it 10 years ago. Maybe it was when you were two years old. Maybe it is now when you are 65. Maybe it is when you're 75 all the way up to 100. We all get to walk and make this choice. We have an opportunity to say, I want to be obedient, even if that word sounds scary or intimidating. I want to be obedient to a God who died for us. Those wages of sin, that heartfelt pain. We have a God who says that yoke is light. And in the moment when I choose to be obedient, when I choose to follow, when I choose to take that little step and say, God, I am tired. I am struggling. I am angry. I no longer want to be a slave to the thing that is holding me back, even if that's as simple as a tiny chocolate bar on a 16th birthday party. This is the moment now where we get to say we have a God who not only died for us, but wants us, wants us in his life, asking us to be obedient because obedience is freedom. The title of my sermon today was Jesus Take the Wheel because today I am asking God and I pray the same way that you can ask God is to say, Jesus, please take the wheel. Take my life. I want to be with you because your yoke is light. So I want you now to turn to your neighbor and say this, I am free in my obedience. Say it again to a different neighbor. I am free. We have a gift of eternal life in our Lord and Savior. We have a gift to walk out of these doors and say, I have chosen to no longer be a slave to sin. I have chosen to see God in a new way. That is the beauty of of our faith, the joy of our faith, the passion of our faith, that even in moments of anger, pain, suffering, and we, when we, will we sin again? Probably two minutes after we leave this room. <laughs> and saying that's okay because I have a Christ who died and took on that death. And we have died alongside him because we are Christians. We have an obedience today. So my question for you all is not what is even that great thing that you are struggling with, but what is that small, minute thing, that chocolate bar, that post, that text message, that neighbor, that friend, maybe it's a child, grandchild, what is something that you can turn and say, God, I have been a slave to this, a slave to my anger, my frustration, my madness. I have been obsessed with something, but I want to be obsessed with you. What is that baby step that we can take today and say that we choose to follow Christ? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to follow you, to be able to choose you, and to be able to be obedient to you. We are grateful for you in this moment. And even when we cannot see or hear from you, we know that you are present 
in our lives. Please allow us to take that baby step. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now please stand as we sing, Be Thou My Vision. We come now to that time where we share our joys and our concerns with each other as a people of God and as a family. To be able to lift up what we need prayers for, but to also bring smiles to everybody's hearts for the things that are joyous and what God has blessed us with. And so if you want to um, uh, raise your hand, and Lizzie will bring the microphone around. If I want to remind you, you need to speak into the mic and say who you are, so that way our folks at home that are watching can hear everything and know who's speaking. And so go ahead and raise your hand, and while she's watching for those, I'm going to start off. Yesterday, um, we had a family reunion for Rick's mother's side of the family, the Walker family, and it was up in Windsor, which um, they mostly hail from, up in that area. And it was a joyous day with about 50 or so walkers up there. And, uh, by, and this is kind of funny because Elizabeth married into a walker family, and we made sure that they were not connected before they got married. <laughs> So, and what was even better was that Rick's mom, as you know, she'd been struggling for, you know, the last couple of years with some depression and things like that, and she had a marvelous time, and she was the oldest one at the reunion as, as part of the Walker family, and it was just marvelous. It was a great day, so it was wonderful. So praise God. So, all right, who's next? Okay, now you're on. Okay, here we go. Levita Lowry. Um, it is a tremendous joy that Kyle Mitchell, who's in the nursery, had his surgery on Thursday, and he's, it was a lot more extensive than they thought or that he planned on. And he's here. He's in the nursery. He's gimping around. Make sure you kick that cast for him. It's not a cast. <laughs> I'm kidding, of course, but it's just a joy that he's with us today. I'd ask for prayers for our daughter Tiffany because... Wedding day is coming up, and I don't know if I can handle her being any more frazzled than she is. <laughs> and it's a tremendous joy. We do love that. So, um, again, that's a tremendous joy. So, that's all. Awesome. Uh, I'm Eli Geis. I'm doing a fundraiser for football, which is a joy, but concern. I'm going to ask you guys to buy stuff from me. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. <laughs> Lizzie, we've got a couple up here. You got Miss Karen and I think Dale also. So, good 
morning. I'm Karen Lawler, and it was a joy many, many moons ago when Jimmy and I got married in Hawaii. And so we are feeling great um, sadness over what's happening in Maui. Uh, 3,000 residences are gone so far. They've found 80 people who've died so far, and there's still probably another 1,000 that there are not accounted for. So please pray for all those people in Hawaii. Yes. Thank you, Karen. Hi, I'm Dale Friedholm, and uh, a couple of months ago, I asked for prayers for my friend Buzz, who had fell when we were on a golf trip, broke seven ribs, and uh, then he developed a uh, brain lesion, I guess, that uh, and cut, had to have surgery for that, and coming out of that, he had seizures. They had to call the crash cart, the whole bit. Um, but he's being released from the doctor this week, so. Oh, amen. Great praise. Yeah, awesome. I'm Bonnie Reed, and I've got a granddaughter, her name is Shelby, that is in dire need of lots of prayer for depression and lots of emotions going on. So I know you guys are big help. <laughs> of course, thank you, Bonnie. And your granddaughter's name is Shelby, correct? Okay, thank you. And we have a good friend of ours, uh, Joe, um, Help me with the last name, honey. Weinmeyer. Um, he's 97 years old, and uh, he's such a joy. Uh, he's a former Marine. He, w um, he was in at uh, Iwo Jima and served there. Um, he had a fall, and he's not doing well, and he's um, having some dementia set in and all of that, and we're not exactly sure what the status is. He's in birthed with his granddaughter, uh, living with her under hospice care, uh, but again, we're not entirely sure if it's end-of-life hospice or inter intermediate. So uh, just for prayers for Joe. Um, he's, uh, I'd really like to see him out on the dance floor just one more time. <laughs> one more. Yes, Lavita Lavita. Lowry. Um, You know, Bonnie just mentioned about depression, and there is such a, a critical thing in our community I have received three phone calls this week from people who do not attend here, but how do we deal with people who are going through depression? How do we handle and direct them back to the Lord when somebody commits suicide? And that was one thing. So Lord, there are many resources. If you know of anybody or if you are suffering from depression, there's help. We're here. Um, we have Stephen ministers, we have faithful church members who are here to help you or help your family or friends. And I just want to lift up uh, Val. Um, she's recovering from her knee replacement surgery, and uh, we do indefinitely, we miss her being sitting back there for us to be able to smile at and wave at and, and all of that, but I understand that she's moving through it day by day, and uh, we're just very proud of her for doing that. And uh, Les and Vicki and, and the family have been uh, incredibly supportive. Obviously, Les has, because he's lived with her, right? But, uh, <laughs> but it's, it's really nice um, to, to see the rest of the family um, helping out so much. And, and we just know that she's going she's gonna to be up kicking soon. Anyone else? All right, let's be in a time of prayer. Thank you, Mickey. Dear Lord, we lift up those in a time of joy, whether that be a wedding for Tiffany, reunion for the Walker family, or anyone in this room in this moment or even online who has joy in their life from celebration, from being able to spend time with their family, with their loved ones. Lord Jesus, we say thank you for all of these gifts. God, we lift up anyone who is in need of healing, whether that be for full, full healing for a leg for Val, whether that be surgery for a hernia or hip 
or anyone struggling in this moment, such as Shelby with depression or sadness or suicidal thoughts, Lord Jesus, we lift them up in this moment to you and we ask for their full healing, Lord. God in heaven, we thank you for each moment. We thank you for guiding us. We thank you for another day for Joe. We thank you. We thank you for each and every single day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And with that, I will ask our ushers to come for the offering. Dear God in heaven, we lift up this offering today. Please bless those who can give and those who cannot. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just as The service is nearing an end. The choir is singing just as I am. Now that the old song is playing, people at the altar are kneeling down to pray. Some are finding mercy, forgiveness for their sin. Some are fighting battles, and they're struggling to win. The time has come to give them to the Lord. That's what this altar is for. That's what this altar is for is for you don't have to carry those burdens anymore there's a light in the darkness there's a love that's true Jesus is waiting friend he's waiting here for you come quickly now before they close the door that's what this altar is for a father is praying with his son a mother kneels beside them thanking God they've come an old man is standing there in tears, giving up a part of him that he's held back for years. Some are finding mercy, forgiveness for their sins. Some are fighting battles and they're struggling to win. The time has come to give in to the Lord. 
That's what this altar is for. That's what this altar is for. You don't have to carry those burdens anymore. There's a light in the darkness. There's a love that's true. Jesus is waiting, friend. He's waiting here for you. Come quickly now before they close the door. You can give your burdens to the Lord. That's what this altar is for. That's what this altar is seated and we turn to the cross as a reminder from whom all blessings flow and just as I said that you may be seated you have to stand again oh my goodness <laughs> we're getting our cardio in today <laughs> please join me as we recite the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, son of Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living. And the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. as we recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lay in the not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. In Christ our Lord invites us and all who love him and earnestly repent of their sins to seek to live in peace with one another. Let us offer our confessions now in a moment of silence and reflection.
Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Hear the good news, Brighton Methodist Church. Christ died while we were still all sinners. This proves God's love for us. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is good to give our thanks and praise to you, O holy God and heavenly Father. You are the one who set streams to sustain your sheep and planted fields of abundance for comfort and nourishment. You promised the coming of an anointed one who would lead the people to peace and righteousness. You promised that life through love would be for all. In hopeful anticipation, we give thanks to you, God of creation, God of the sacred ordinary, God of the broken and unworthy, God of us all. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn saying together, holy, 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 we're God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of the glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Help us remember through this sacrament, Father God, that we are never alone with our sacred responsibilities. Share with us your promised spirit and send us forth refreshed and renewed into a troubled and needy world. By the same spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to the least, the lost, and the lonely. All honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. May the church say amen. amen. I ask it ask our ushers to come forward for communion.
as we walk out of these hallowed halls, we are reminded that we have a God that allows us to choose and that we have chosen him the same way he has chosen us. One who loves us, who died for us, and is walking with us each and every single moment. I pray that your week is full of joy, happiness, and a reminder of who Christ is. Amen, Brighton Methodist Church? Amen. Amen.